Some people believe that mobilization around the Gina 6 could be the start of the civil rights movement in the 21st century. Is a widespread movement needed? And do you think that issues surrounding criminal justice will take center stage? Well, I think issues of criminal justice is a place to start. Uh, whether or not the, the civil rights movement, I think one thing that concerns me is attempt, an attempt to reinvent the old movement, the demonstrations, the, the notion that there has to be leadership in a classic kind of way. I don't know if the 21st century is prepared to accept those kinds of modalities of, of civil rights concerns any longer. I think we need a new, I think we need a new, a new modality, a new kind of mobilization. I don't quite know what that is just yet. I need to think about that a little bit more, but I sense that something new is needed. And I think what happens with these demonstrations is that they become sensationalist. And people see them and there's a kind of immediate catharsis that comes from watching these demonstrations on television. And so the medium becomes a message in the state, and the medium suggests that these things are happening out there someplace, and then happening within my own community. So we need to find a way of, of a kind of mobilization, again through a kind of dialogue process that brings these issues home so that people realize that they're taking place in their own proverbial backyard. Michael Bell's original attorney, a public defender, called no witnesses during the trial and failed to object to the selection of an all-white jury. This is a tragic situation repeated every day across the country. Why hasn't public discussion focused on this point, when everybody knows that a person with means could have escaped these charges? People just don't care. Then there's, there's a lack of concern. First of all, I think there's just a lack of knowledge about this. You know, interestingly enough, going back to my days in the Justice Department Security Relations Service, an African-American district judge in, in Seattle, Washington, in, in the state of Washington, took it upon himself and at his own cost to do training of his colleagues, who were primarily white, about the asymmetries of justice in America and how the justice system is perceived by blacks. So what he did was to create scenarios, going from arrest to trial, there's about a nine-step procedure in the criminal justice process that goes from arrest to trial, and every one of the key figures, the, 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 the judge to do the, the arresting officers, the judge that did the arraignment and hearings, the judge that conducted the trial, the jury were all black, and the defendant was white. And it was, it, it, even for myself, it was, it was shocking to see this betrayal, because it drove home exactly what this system is like, what it feels like to be a black person in this country still, affected by the justice system. The realization that even though I'm a professor at a university that has some renown and a program that is well thought of, I could walk out this door today, tonight, and find myself in a situation very similar to the ones that these unfortunate young men find themselves in Gina. So there's a continuum there that I'm not that far away from. So it's, I'm still, I, 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 I sense this myself in a very personal kind of way. I've been stopped under suspicion of having stolen a car when I was driving my own car, okay? just because I'm an African-American, because I'm black. So we're all tied into this process. So it's, it's, it's helpful to, to use some mechanism to get whites to sort of understand in a more visceral sense what it feels like to be a person of color in this country. Dr. Warfield, in, in your view, what steps need to be taken to address the fundamental question of racism, both in its unfortunate outcomes, such as the case of the Gina Six, but also at its roots. Well, I think we've talked a lot about that. Really. I, again, I think that uh, we need to find ways to, to, to block off the psychological escape routes that most people in this country have. And by the way, those escape routes, I don't mean to belabor the white community, uh, the non-people of color community in this country, because I think that many of us as African Americans and people of color who are advancing or have advanced up the social scale the tendency to do the same. Hey, we want to sort of get away. We want to celebrate our achievements and where we are. We want to believe in the political philosophy of meritocracy and individual achievement in this country. Even though at our root cause we know we know this is actually not the case. So I think we need to find ways of 
bringing home this reality to people. Maybe you could get people to do more work in communities of color, all of us, to come out of our realms of, of, of hierarchy and come down and work in communities of, work in communities of color, where the everyday life of persons can be seen. I recall after 9-11, the New York Times did an interview of people in communities of color around the country. They interviewed this woman in Chicago, in the south side of Chicago. And she was asked about her feelings on 9-11. Was she concerned about terrorism and she said, in her life and in her, in her community? She said, look, we face terrorism every day. Terrorist, terrorists, Osama bin Laden has not been attacked our community. We have our own form, we have our own form of terrorism that we're facing every day. And so I think this is a kind of logic and a kind of reality that takes place in these communities. And we need to find we need to understand that in a better way and find ways of alleviating those pressure points that take place in those communities. Thank you, Dr. Warfield, for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you, Paul.